Mm -hmm. Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order. Uh, Monday, the 6th of January, 2014, the first council meeting of the new year, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening. Uh, if we could just take a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. I would ask Councilman Brown if he would lead us in the pledge. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Councilmember Katati. Councilmember Davis. Councilmember Moffitt. And Councilmember Shule. No ceremonial items this evening, uh, but I do want to recognize uh, some young people that are with us this night, tonight, uh, Cub Scouts from Weeblows Cub Scouts, uh, Pack 400. Uh, they're in the back of the room. They are here to, you know, everybody wave to them. Plus, they wanted to know if they were going to be on TV. So, <laughs> Cable 8, make sure you pick them up on TV. Okay. <laughs> great, great. Uh, they, they were here to visit uh, the city council and council to learn about the duties of the job of city council persons and the mayor and talk about why and why it's important to do the things that we do and also why it's important to obey the laws of the land. And this is a part of their uh, program for receiving a badge. So I had an opportunity to meet with them this evening, uh, very interesting young people, uh, nice questions, and I'm just glad to have you with us and I hope this uh, works well enough for you to get the badge that you, as far as I'm concerned, you rightly deserve. Um, let me ask are there comments by members of the council on any, any particular items that recognize the mayor pro tem? I would like to recognize that you celebrated another birthday last week. So well, I appreciate that. happy birthday, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank and you. hope that you will have many, 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 many more. Well, thank you. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. I, I, I hope so also. <laughs> <laughs> And I also uh, want to announce uh, we, we made committee appointments uh, last last month, and uh, one of the committees is the crime committee, crime cabinet, and uh, Councilman Clement uh, previously served on that committee. Uh, Councilman Brown has served on the committee for for many years. Councilman Moffitt serves on it, and uh, Councilman Davis serves as as an alternate. And would like to recommend that. Councilman Brown serve as co-chair of that committee uh, when it begins again. So, and Gene has agreed. Where's Gene? Yeah, Gene yeah, has Gene has agreed to to accept that. So we, we appreciate that effort. Uh, as, as probably most of you know, the, the council tonight uh, had a closed session, uh, and that's why we are starting a, a bit late. We met tonight at uh, 5:30, uh, and the city council voted unanimously to. Con occur with the city manager, Tom Bonfield's recommendation uh, to release a report on the findings of the Durham Police Department's internal affairs investigation into the deaths of Hazu Werder on November 19, 2013. Uh, this authorization was made pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160-168-C7 and that the release of information was determined by the city manager and the city council to be essential to maintaining public confidence in administration of city services. Now, a report of the findings of the internal affairs investigation should be completed in the next couple of days, and we do expect that report will be released this week. And I, I just want to say, and I'm sure the council persons also agree, uh, while this investigation is, is important, uh, we also recognize the fact that a young man lost his life. Uh, and obviously that has had an impact on his family and others in the community. So we don't take that lightly. 
but we also know it's important that we release as much information as we possibly can, and that will be the purpose of the releasing of the uh, report sometime this week. Now, there's an SBI investigation that is ongoing, and as probably some of you read, uh, that is not complete in the sense that uh, they don't have the medical examiner's report. Uh, that report will not be given to the city council. The SBI report will not be given to the city council. It will not be given to the police department. It will be given to the district attorney's office. And once the medical examination is complete, I assume that will complete the SBI's investigation there, turn that over to the district attorney's office, and it will be up to the, the DA's office to determine what moves beyond that. But what, what we're looking at is an internal investigation that the police department has made. And we've got a, got a summary of that, an oral summary of that in our closed session. And as I said, a written summary of that report will be given sometime this week. And it's also important that uh, while we will release that report, uh, we also want to be respectful of the family. So it's our intent to make that a report as a, available to the family as soon as it's available to the, the uh, public, uh, probably before. And the manager, the city attorney, will be getting in touch with the attorney's family, who represents their family, that's Alex Charnes, as far as I know, to make him aware of this so that he will know when the report is released and he'll have that that he can share with the family also. So uh, we uh, are just still trying to move forward. We're trying to get this out as quickly as possible. We want to be factual. Uh, we want to re reveal as much information as possibly we can, and you'll be seeing a summary of that uh, this week, certainly no later than Friday of this week, that report will be made available. So having, having said that, we're going to move on with the agenda, and the first is to listen to any priority items by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Uh, two priority items this evening, agenda item number 16, uh, which is the comprehensive plan amendment Meadows at South Point 2. Uh, this item uh, is being referred back or deferred to the January 21st, 2014 City Council meeting due to a uh, notification error in the newspaper advertisement. And agenda item number 17, zoning map change Meadows at South Point 2. Uh, that item is also deferred to the January 21st, 2014 meeting uh, due to a uh, similar notification error in the newspaper. That's all my priority items. Second. It's been proper to move and second that the manager's priority items be approved. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Let, let me just comment on that because I know this is a public hearing matter. Uh, I will not be in attendance at the uh, January 21st meeting. I will be attending the U.S. Conference of Mayors annual meeting. But there was one item on that that I would hope that someone would look at on, on that particular item and it, it had to do with um, the construction of the proposed buildings and one of the pieces that uh, concerned me is that and if I could pull it up it was uh, it, it, had, it had to do with the construction material and it allows vinyl siding and I would hope that uh, that would not be allowed as a part of this proposed building and that was listed on, I was trying to find a page, I think it's listed on page 11 of the first attachment. Or maybe it's the second attachment. Anyway, it, ha it had to do with the uh, building construction. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was on the, it was on the zoning piece, yeah. And I want to think it was on, I'll get to it before the meeting is over, but uh, I would hope that someone will pay attention to that as we, as we move on. I recognize the city attorney for any priority items that he might have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in that case, we'll proceed with the agendas printed. And as you know, if there are items that on the consent agenda, I'll just read each item. <coughs> And if a member of the council or a member of the public uh, chooses to pull one of the items, then we will. Uh, deal with that. that that was his, that says on page it was page eleven and it had to do with the covering. Thank you. Um, on the consent agenda, on item one, approval of city council minutes. 
Item two is Durham City County Appearance Commission appointment. <coughs> Item three is the Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners appointment. Item four is the resolution memorializing Joseph William Anderson Beckton Jr. Item five is the bid report November 2013. Item six is street and infrastructure acceptances. Item seven is adopt preliminary assessment role and set a public hearing for confirmation of assessment role for street paving on Clover Hill Place, Dunwoody Subdivision. Item eight is system vision program agreement between the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency, the City of Durham and Advanced Energy Corporation. I had one, one question about that, uh, that item. Um, item nine is ownership transfer of two city owned lots in Southwest Central Durham to Habitat for Humanity of Durham, Inc. And someone has pulled that item, item nine. Item 10 is piggyback purchase, one custom pumper truck. Item 11 is contract extension, estimated annual requirements for asphaltic concrete. Item 12 is co-op contract purchase, three knuckle boom loader trucks. Item 13 is Upper Noose River Basin Association nutrient credit product project. Item 14 is the household hazardous waste contract amendment number five. Item 15 through 17 items that can be found on the general business agenda is public hearings. Entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda with the exception of item nine and the one that I pulled, which is very, uh, it's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. We'll move to the general business agenda, public hearings. Item 15 is FY 2014-2015 annual action plan needs a public hearing. Staff person on that item. Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of council. I am Wilma Conyers, Federal Programs Coordinator. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive citizen comments on the community development needs in Durham as it relates to the use and receipt of community development block grant, home investment partnership, and emergency solution grant funds. This public meeting is a requirement for the preparation and the submission of the city's 2014-2015 annual action plan. Notice of this meeting was advertised in the Durham Herald Sun and via general listserv. <clears throat> Excuse me. As a recipient of CDBG and home and ESG funds, the city is required to hold at least two meetings during the development of the annual action plan and one being early in the developmental stage of the plan. We anticipate that the second hearing will be held in late April. In addition, the city is required to hold a public, to publish a copy of the draft annual action plan at least 30 days prior to the submission. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has not yet announced the FY 2014 entitlement allocations and has advised grantees not to submit its consolidated plan or annual action plan until those announcements have taken place. At that time, PJs, that is grantees, are to submit their final plans with the exact entitlement allocations. However, for planning purposes, the city expects to receive approximately $1,650,000 in CDBG funds, $700,000 in home, and $100,000 in ESG funds. A summary of comments from this public hearing and written comments received during the development of this plan will be incorporated into the final plan for submission. Thank you. Thank you. You've heard the staff report. Uh, this is a public hearing. I would ask first for the comments by members of the council. We have persons that have signed up to speak on this item. If there are no comments at this time by, by the council, I'd call on those persons that have signed up to speak. I would ask if you would limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, Steve Hopkins, and if you would proceed to the podium to the right. Uh, Rafig Zaidi. Uh, Sharon Elliott Bynum. And Dwayne Langley, the Warren Langley.
Mr. Mayor, City Council members, my name is Stephen Hopkins. I live at 654 North Hardy Street, Apartment B, Durham, North Carolina. I have been a resident of Northeast Central Durham most of my life. I would like to quickly remind you of a concept that was accepted and implemented in Northeast Central in 1994, the weed and seed strategy. It called for communities to look at the issues facing itself in a way that communities uh, could tack them uh, at the root causes while addressing the problems at hand. We had to come, this was a whole new approach for community leaders. We had to come together, have open and honest discussions, and trust each other, something totally unheard of in Northeast Central at the time. It had to be a partnership led by the to come in and uh, do things for us. We, the residents, had to have ownership of the changes. There were many heated meetings with neighborhood leaders threatening to walk away, even a few meetings when we almost came to blows. But at the end, we refused to give up. Things started to change. Neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods were having meaningful discussions and plans of action were taking shape. It became real clear class, fast to the leaders in Northeast Central Durham with all the attention that we were getting to, that we were getting. It also opened us up to people who didn't really want change in Northeast Central because Northeast Central had became uh, a place for drug rehab program, very low income housing, and a cash cow, if you would, for nonprofit predators who just wanted to make money off the suffering of its residents. We also accommodated the reach element of all the neighborhoods after housing was eliminated and rehab in other parts of the city. What do we need? Jobs. Jobs hadn't come to the residents as we had hoped. Uh, we need jobs for ex-offenders, single moms, teenagers, and high school educated. Two, protect our neighborhoods. We are competing for our own neighborhoods being bought out. Current residents are being priced out. Three, combat crime. Crime is back on the rise. We have more murders than any part of the city. Crime like this can't be fixed with more cops. We need after school programs. We need job training. We need banks, grocery stores, real organized neighborhood. Four, uh, built up our streets and sidewalks. We still have streets unpaved and major streets where our kids have to walk in the streets or in ditches, such as Hardy Street. Five, improve the housing stock. We still have a lot of boarded up and run down properties. We need investment in adult human capital in Northeast Central. We need self-sufficiency program. Our businesses need help with expansion. We need help building programs to help understand all the changes that are coming and help us to stay focused as a community rather than individual. Our neighborhood organizations need help with capacity building. These are the real needs in Northeast Central. We need to finish what we started. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And uh, you sent us copies of that, but I, I assume it, that'll probably be part of the discussion at the Northeast Central Durham Committee meeting, subcommittee when they meet. Uh, the next person is uh, Rafi Zaidi. Do I have that name spelled, pronounced correctly? She's not here. Uh, Sharon Elliott Bynum. Good evening, Good evening uh, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pertam, and other council members. Uh, my name is Sharon Elliott Bynum, and I reside at 105 Chancellor's Ridge Drive, and I'm a lifelong resident of Durham County. I currently operate a nonprofit, Healing with Care, located at 214 Broadway Street in Dur downtown Durham, Tier, for the past 19 years. We built our model based on the unmet needs of disenfranchised, low-income populations in Durham County. This is a comprehensive one-stop shop that includes housing, food, supportive services, and other medical and dental needs. 
I am here this evening to bring your attention to process procedures as it relates to receiving funding for a nonprofit like my own that has participated actively in the housing process and offered our location for many of the events and meetings regarding homelessness. For example, the Point in Time Count, Project Homeless Connect, and various other meetings. Recently, CARE applied for $108 to rehab one of our houses for four homeless female veterans who may also have um, substance abuse issues, HIV, or other chronic issues. During the process, we were told that the funding would be allocated for a new project and that there were no existing female veteran projects in Durham. A recent article in NNO said that North Carolina is the home of 87,840 female veterans as of se September 2012. Female veterans have a harder time in the labor market and they don't self-identify as vets because they don't think of themselves as qualifying for benefits because they didn't engage in active combat. During the process, the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, ranked us too with an average score of 85, and the agency that was recommended by the community development had an average score of 84. Again, I, br I bring your attention to process. The second process issue is the fact that the agency who received the recommendation gave back $48,150, which in part made the $108,000 available. And the project that was recommended is not in fact a new project, but instead part two of a renewal project. Thirdly, CARE was awarded $28,000 for the same exact project that we applied for in 2008-09. The executive director passed away um, before obtaining the funds, and when I inquired, they said, wait until there's an RFP. So thank you for listening to my concerns. I, I really just would like to have clarity of process and I want to make sure that the needs of the home, homeless female veterans in our neighborhood um, is one that is inclusive. Thank you. Thank you. Warren Langley. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Bell, members of the City Council. Happy New Year. It is an honor and privilege to speak on behalf of the Citizens Advisory Committee. The CAC works to ensure the quality of life for citizens in Durham by advising the City Council and Board of County Commissioners on housing and community development needs and to improve housing quality and affordability and economic opportunities for low and moderate income families. Additionally, the CAC evaluates and makes annual recommendations on how the city should use entitlement funding here in Durham. In a city with a 19.4% poverty rating, safe and affordable housing for the poorest residents is scarce. According to the annual point in time count, the homeless count in Durham has grown from 395 in 2001 to 698 in 2012 to 759 in 2013. Durham is one of the most expensive rental housing markets in North Carolina. A minimum age earner making $7.25 an hour would have to work 102 hours a week to afford the average or fair market rent of $742 for a one bedroom unit or 115 hours a week to afford an apartment, a two bedroom unit, $832. Our strategies to address affordable housing centers on housing, production, and retention. As the demand for affordable housing continues to grow, we must also work to ensure a quality labor force for employment opportunities relocating to the area, which will expand the economic conditions for our citizens. When working to recruit businesses and provide economic development incentives, we must develop and implement innovative educational and training programs necessary to meet the workforce needs of, of Durham community to support economic development. By equipping Durham citizens with the skills to, ex to exceptionally perform for the companies expanding and relocating to the area, we improve the economic viability and attractiveness of Durham and ensure the continued decline in unemployment and poverty while providing citizens with equal quality and affordable opportunities for an improved quality of life. 
Additionally, we must create real incentives for developers to provide affordable housing and implement, immediately begin planning affordable housing around future transit corridors, which will be the hub of future employment opportunities and service centers. Founded in 1850 as a railroad stop, Durham has become a thrive, thriving industrial city and today a resurgence of investment downtown and the rehabilitation of several aging neighborhoods near the, course, near the core of downtown has helped continue to thrive as we move into our future. If we're going to see a continued investment in Durham and to improve the quality of life for low to moderate income communities, we must make that same investment that we've made downtown and other developing communities. The CAC looks forward to working with the City Council, Board of County Commissioners, and the Department of Community Development to continue to engage citizens in developing and improving the quality of life for all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Have a great evening. Thank you. I, I assume you will leave your written remarks with the clerk, if you don't mind. Let me ask, are there other persons that want to speak on this item, this being a public hearing item? Uh, yes, ma'am. Victoria, you, you, you just gave me a name. You didn't say what you was so you fill the card out. You want to come forward, please? And if you could state your name and the item you're speaking to and then fill out a card with the clerk's office so we'll have that on the record. I apologize for not signing up. My name is Debbie White. I live at 60 Citation Drive in Durham. I'm the financial officer for CASA, and I'm here tonight with Joyce Dancil Williams. Uh, Joyce is the vice chair of the Council to End Homelessness in Durham and the programs uh, director at CASA. We are here to speak tonight just about the need for developing additional permanent supportive housing units in the city of Durham. I recently read an article published in the New England Journal of Medicine that notes that there is a distinct correlation between the high cost of health care spending in the U.S. and the relative lack of investment in permanent supportive housing. The message is clear, housing is a form of health care. The article states, studies have shown that the cost of supportive housing are largely offset by resultant savings in services used, mostly from the reduced use of the health care system. And it goes on to discuss an innovative approach to reducing Medicaid spending on health care in New York State by expanding housing resources and targeting high-risk populations. Uh, CASA currently owns 26 units of affordable housing in Durham right now. Five people moved out in 2013 and five people moved in. We have 107 people waiting on our waiting list for an apartment in Durham right now. Uh, an apartment that is affordable and uh, provides referrals for community-based services. At the current rate of turnover, they would have to wait it would take 21 and a half years to house all the people on our waiting list. So we ask the city to prioritize the CDBG and the home funds to serve people who need housing the most, people who are experiencing homelessness, and people with disabilities who are low income. It's a wise investment in people and in the community, and it will save on health care costs in the long term. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. If you could leave your state statement with the clerk and I also will. if you could just fill out one of the cards so we'd have that for a record also, please. Uh, Victoria Peterson. Um, City Council, years ago, um, um, particularly up in the inner cities, you had a lot of the young men and women just sort of out there not skilled and not trained. And the federal government pumped a lot of dollars really into these cities, and the cities also received some of their own, own local dollars. Those dollars were used to train a lot of your young men and women. And matter of fact, I myself, uh, and very few people know this, but I'll just let this uh, cat out of the bag, that I'm also a graduate of Job Corps. Uh, Job Corps helped save me. Uh, if I had not gone away to Job Corps, I probably would have winded up in prison. But I was able to get the kind of training, uh, and not just educational training, but social training, uh, how to act and how to behave. It was a residential program that, that young folks um, could go away 
and get training in school training. They could work on their GED or whatever. And one of the things that I have observed here in Durham that Durham is really lacking is a residential training program for a lot of our young men and women who fall through the cracks. They may not have a parent or an adult to help them and to gear and to steer them the right way. What happened to me, my mother was a teenager when she had me. And I was raised in the foster care system for 15 years. But the system that I was in was very abusive. So I started to rebel. So what I would do is run away from home and get in trouble. I was a, I, I was, I just, I was a young person that had a lot of issues. In this community, I see a lot of that. I see a lot of our young people where I live, I can wake up in the middle of the night and look out of my door and see young people walking up and down the street on Ridgeway because they're leaving some of the areas. These young people need some skills. And I think what our government needs to do, we get a lot of monies from the feds, and that's good. But we do not have an ongoing training program, a 24-hour training program. We have developed um, Holton School. They have a lot of property. Somebody needs to get out there and build a dormitory. We have a Holloway Street School that is sitting there. I'm not saying that the city needs to run it, but we have a lot of churches in this community. We have a lot of non-for-profits in this community that can get together if there are some dollars out here because somebody has to put some dollars. We have allowed somebody to come into this community and build a dormitory across the street because that's basically what it is. Cross the street from the... Um, um, from the police station. It's gonna house a lot of young people. Well, poor kids need that same thing. Besides the college kids, our poor children that fall through the cracks in this community, they need housing, they need job training, and they need, and they need their education. So I'm hoping that um, the federal dollars, that we can try to uh, direct some of these dollars, Mr. Mayor, for job training, for some form of a residential program, I think in the future. You don't have to start with a residential program in the beginning, but you can have some kind of a job training program here in Durham, and Durham doesn't really have that. Thank you, Ms. Thank Peterson. You. Let me ask, are there other persons that want to speak on this item, this being a public hearing? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, I, I would like to get, um, a follow-up to the questions raised by uh, Ms. Bynum. Uh, and I don't know if you can do it this evening, you can do it in time for the work session Thursday, whatever is appropriate. Uh, I, and I guess the reason I, I'm raising the question, I, everybody has a niche. And uh, I, I think that uh, one of the areas that uh, she is focused on is an area that uh, hasn't been addressed, and that's uh, women veterans in terms of homelessness, and et cetera. Uh, so I'd just like to get a better understanding of at least the comments that she made. And Mayor Bell, members of council, Reginald Johnson, director of the Community Development Department. The comments raised by Ms. Bynum actually refer to the continuum of care process, not the f for social funding that's the subject of this public hearing. Uh, so that's the first piece of the, the, the matter that she's speaking about actually comes before the Homeless Services Advisory Committee on Wednesday. So it's a separate process from the subject of this public hearing. The second part that she mentioned about the 28,000, we'll have to, to do some uh, research, but I'm familiar with what she's asking about, but there's a separate funding source from the subject of this public hearing. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, will the Homeless Services Advisory Committee be voting on uh, the information that that's coming to us. Yes, on the recommendations. Yes, ma'am. On that, the that, recommendations only. Yes, that's the subject yeah, of the meeting on yeah. Wednesday. What what Miss um, Elliot Bynum has said is something that really needs to be fully investigated because it appears that uh, even though that's not what we're dealing with, Mr. Mayor, I'm glad she brought it up, and I hope that you will come to work session. And, and be able to share some more information with us. Because if we don't somehow break this chain of 
same people getting the money all the time. It just isn't, it doesn't seem fair. So if, if she could come back on, on Thursday and give us some more information, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we've, uh, in, any other comments? I recognize Councilman Sewell. Also for uh, Reginald, uh, the, we heard, uh, appreciate the comments from, from everybody tonight, uh, but uh, we heard from the folks from CASA. I wonder how the guest road, uh, how are we doing on the, the CASA uh, housing on guest road? I know it had been a little bit behind. How, how's that doing? I would have to uh, provide you with some more information on Thursday on that. Okay. My understanding generally is doing well, but I okay. can't talk in detail right now. All right. Appreciate that. Um, and I wanted to also add that the, 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 um, one of the sources that we do have now for funding for the kind of housing that you were talking about is we have our penny for housing. And we have about, uh, about a million dollars at this point built up for just the of local general fund money, Durham people taxing themselves, uh, to provide the, uh, the, the kind of housing that you're talking about and to, or to help leverage some uh, other financing for that housing. So uh, I hope that you and other groups will be able to take advantage of that. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, let me ask the staff, the action, I've closed the public hearing. What action do you need this evening on this item? that the department is requesting is that the, the uh, city council receive the comments All right. I so move, Mr. Second. Mr. it's been properly moved and second madam clerk will you open the vote close the vote it passes seven to zero uh, let's move back to the items that have been pulled I pulled item eight and it was just for information purposes more or less I should have uh, I thought I had pinned in there I guess one of the questions that I had, this has to do with the um, company, that the energy company, and, and do we have any information on, on the company that we're talking about contracting with? Uh, yes, we do have information on the company. Mr. Mayor, this company is part of the program for the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. This is a long, the company that they're using is a company that they've used for some time. So what's been the experience? I, I know you said they use them. What, do we have any experience with what they've been? And the, re the reason I asked is one, one of the points that I noticed was the analysis said that uh, they're going to average, they're going to pay the difference uh, if the energy cost exceeds $33 per month. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess my question was, do you know how much of how often have they had to go back with the other units in terms of paying uh, paying the difference? And the other question I had is, you, they've got this number thirty three dollars per month. Uh, does that take into account changes in energy costs, utilities, and going up or changing? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have to give you get additional information okay. uh, in terms of how many times they've had to uh, pay. This company, is my understanding, is the same program and company that was, we use at Eastway. Uh, okay. So this, we're well, we've got experience there, then, right? Right. Yes. Okay. I, I can't tell okay. you. That, that's good. Right. Right. That, that's that's the only question I had. I okay. I knew you were here, so that's why. Okay. I I didn't take the motion on the item. So moved and second. It's been properly moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. And item nine that was pulled by. Dorothy Krum, is Ms. Krum here? Krum here, C-R-O-M. She's no longer here. Okay, entertain the motion. Say what? Will, will somebody get her? She's... She's gone. Okay, well, She's gone. well, I guess maybe she didn't want to That's deal okay, with it. Bro. Well, entertain the motion on item. Second. Proper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Okay. There, there's one item I meant to have asked, and um, we, we, we had some concerns raised about the floor arrangement that was left on the police department. In fact, it's been removed. And I just wonder, Mr. Manager, if you could give us what is the department practice on persons placing uh, information on public properties that we own? 
you know, who makes the determination as to how long it stays there, who gives them permission, et cetera. I mean, you, you might have an answer on that. Yeah, I, I don't. I'd like okay. to get, get that All for right. you. Typically, general services, but I'll get a clarification. Okay. I, I think it would be helpful in the future for that. I, any other items to come before the council? If not, the meeting's adjourned. It's 7.48 p.m. Thank you.